Welcome back to EPV TV viewers. Chris Nichols here, and you have asked for this video because we in the past have done best camera kit that we would buy for under $1,000 and best camera kit we'd buy for under $4,000. Now we are doing what you asked for. Best camera kit, dream kit, money is no object. What would we get if money wasn't a factor? Now, when we did our two videos in the past, we were always trying to work within a budget, try to figure out what's the most versatile option given the limitations. But for this video, because we don't have any limitations, I really think it's gonna be more focusing on what would bring us the most joy, what would be the most fun for us to personally use for our own work. So we're gonna have a lot of different opinions and not necessarily gonna be the most expensive gear on the planet necessarily. And we have some special guests who are also gonna chime in on what they think would be their dream kits should be a lot of fun. Now, I'm gonna shop at thecamerastore.com because, well, there are favorites here in Calgary. Let's get started on what I would pick if money were no object. What's up, DP Review? I am actually coming to you from Traverse Bay in the great state of Michigan. Anyway, I, Jordan asked me if I would share my favorite camera dream lens setup if money were no object. This is actually really easy. So it's pretty amazing what we've got in terms of technology today. If you had told me when I was starting out what we'd have in terms of what cameras can do now, I would say you're kidding and I wouldn't have believed it. Ironically, my dream setup is sort of based on what I've been working on a couple projects with lately. It would be a Leica M setup. This is a Leica M10P and it's the 50 millimeter Sumalux. Now, you did say if money were no object and that's really easy to fill out because you could go for the $15,000 Noctilux 75 millimeter or even the Sumalux 90 millimeter. That would be my dream setup. I love manual focus. I love simple cameras and this just allows me to do my thing. So thanks guys for having me on here. Later. Okay, so I just said I'm not gonna choose the most expensive thing possible, but one of my first choices is actually gonna be Leica's. And here's the reason why. Every time I use them, I actually have a ton of fun and that's really my main goal. I have had the privilege of being able to use cameras like you know the M series, the SL2, I love those cameras, but they're not something I'd really wanna have for myself personally. The M series I know really ignites passion for a lot of people, but not for me. I actually like autofocusing and I want a compact camera and I don't need color color. I'd be happy to shoot black and white the rest of my life. So the Leica Q2 monochrome. It's beautiful. You should go watch The Man Who Wasn't There. Pleasantville got it in the wrong order. Should have started out color and turned to black and white. Go watch Roma. Go watch Rashomon. Like, You're done. okay, I'm done. But that would be my ideal walk around camera. Just have with me all the time. Now, naturally, a lot of people might think, well, hey, if there's no financial limitation, why not go just for the biggest and the baddest, get into something with the medium format cameras. I'm not a huge medium format camera shooter. I mean, I've used a lot of them and I don't usually love the experience. So first off, I'm not a big studio photographer. I don't really feel like the Phase One or Hasselblad more studio design cameras would really suit me. So those are out. I need something more compact. I've used the X1D series, beautiful design, interesting concept, but I never enjoyed actually shooting those as an experience. So those are out. The only cameras that would really come close to consideration for me would be the Fujifilm GFX series. And I don't love using all those cameras. Only really one in particular that I enjoyed, that was the 100S. I mean. Fantastic imager, I like the way that handled. I'd go the 32 to 64 zoom, I'd go the 110 F2 uh, telephoto lens, and probably the 30 millimeter 3.5 to round things out. But medium format's not really for me. I mean, the image quality is amazing. Great dynamic range, tons of resolution, but I don't think image quality is the be all end all of a camera system. It really comes down to what kind of work you're gonna do, what you need that camera to do for you. And I honestly don't need that kind of raw image quality. So I'm gonna go with something even more compact, full frame, something more versatile. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is Sony. I mean, if I'm thinking with my head, that's an obvious choice because their technology is fantastic. Their cameras are reliable. They make very versatile systems. And I really do feel like, especially cameras like the A1 with its advanced technology is a step towards that kind of electronic shutter only kind of design. And I really do think that's probably the future of full frame photography. They do have some great lenses, although mostly prime. Some of their zooms really need some updating. I do like the 12 to 24 though. I'd probably take that, the 50 mil 1.2. I have a soft spot for the 85 mil 1.4. I've used that quite a bit for portraits and I do like how that renders things. And I'd probably grab the 90 mil macro even though it overlaps in a very similar way. I just wish they had better zooms. Now speaking of good zooms, 
The Nikon Z system, I mean, they're 24 to 70 2.8, it's fantastic. They're 70 to 200 2.8, it's fantastic. And they actually make great lenses all around. You'd pretty much be covered right there. If they made a ZFC full frame, that'd be it. Video over, Chris, done. I don't need anything else, but we're not quite there yet. Speaking of good lenses, Canon's another great option. I mean, they've got really nice lenses. The 70 200 2.8 is one of my favorites just because of how compact it is. They make a decent 24 to 70 and lots of excellent primes. And I do also like the way that those cameras handle and shoot. While I try to figure out my dream camera kit from medium format or full frame, let's see how Jordan's doing with his video picks. Hey guys, Sally with Learning Cameras here, and I'm here to talk about if money was no object, what would I choose? And honestly, I have it right here in my hand. This is a pretty fancy setup here, but it is the Canon R5 paired along with the 50 F12. These are my go-to things. These are always in my bag. This is absolutely what I need. I love the low aperture and the high resolution. This camera is amazing to me. Another thing I have in my bag would be the 24 to 70. I have the 70 to 200 and I love an 85 prime. The reason why I need high resolution is because I do a lot of retouching and it's so easy to just go in there, zoom in there and retouch everything. Another thing I would also have in my arsenal if money was no object is also the Sony a7R4. I love that camera paired along with their new 50 F12, such a great combo. And honestly, I would spend the money because I, as a wedding and portrait photographer, I love these cameras, I love these lenses. Hey everyone, it's Jordan here to talk about my dream kit. And as soon as Chris brought this up, I immediately thought, oh, I want an Alexa 65. It's shot some of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen, if Beale Street could talk or Roma, but unfortunately it's rental only. So I'm gonna have to scale things back a little bit, just going to an Alexa LF, which is still, you know, over $100,000 fully loaded to get this thing up and shooting. But the thing I was most excited about was looking at some lenses that I've had a short time with that I would love to shoot more. Now, unfortunately, this really high-end stuff isn't available from the camera store, so I'm just gonna swing over and take a look at B&H Photo. So for a really clean kind of look, I don't think I could do much better than the Tekina Vista series of lenses. These will fit on a lot of large format sensors, really nice rendering to them, and actually they're reasonably affordable as far as cinema lenses go. But then every once in a while, I'm gonna want something a little different. So I would also really like to pick up some Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses. I can get a little LF extender, so they're gonna cover that larger sensor. And I love the look of those lenses. I think I'd be very happy with this setup. Unfortunately, this is gonna be a huge package, so I'm really gonna need a crew in order to make all this work. But the good news is, if you have an Alexa LF, it's probably really easy to make some fairly insincere friends pretty quickly. Okay, but that's pretty crazy high-end. So I pulled up the camera store's professional cinema cameras page, and I gotta admit, I'm struggling a little bit. I didn't enjoy shooting with the Sony FX9 and FX6, the interface, the ergonomics, just not really my bag. Now the Canon C300 Mark III and C500 Mark II look like awesome cameras, but I do find it kind of annoying they're available in an EF or a PL mount. I'd really like something with a shorter flange distance on its mount so it would be a lot more adaptable. The one really interesting looking exception is the Canon C70, which uses an RF mount, but it's a cropped sensor and none of the RF lenses are designed for that format. But I still love the image off that camera, so I really think I could put together a nice kit if I got a PL adapter and then a set of Zeiss CP3s, their compact cinema lenses. I think that'd be a pretty sweet package. Okay, so finally, let's take a look at full frame mirrorless cameras. Now, I've been using an S1H for a while and I absolutely love the experience of shooting with it. I would still keep that panel like a 24 to 70, but you know what, this is my dream kit. So I'm also going to grab a PL adapter and get some of those Atlas anamorphics. That would be a lot of fun to have in my back pocket once in a while and that camera has beautiful anamorphic support. But there are some things with the S1H I'm occasionally missing. It would be really nice to have 8K recording in some situations. And you know what? I would like to have a really nice autofocusing camera. So I loved shooting with the Sony Alpha 1. What I'd probably do there though, because I really want to take advantage of the great autofocus on that camera, is I would get a few primes with linear focus motors. I mean, I could get the 135 1.8 GM, which I just adore, the 50 mil 1.2, it's just a stunning lens, and the 24 f1.4 is one of my favorite ultra wide angles ever made. That would give me a really portable setup with great autofocus and beautiful image quality. That's a real contender as well. 
but I think I want to hear from one more of our friends on their dream kit and then we'll jump over and see what Chris wound up selecting. To be honest, I wouldn't say that there are any dream digital cameras out there right now. Medium format, too large and too slow. Full frame, Sony makes a fantastically fast camera in A1, which is good, but quite a dull dream. If money was no problem and I was stinking rich, I wouldn't go for sensible things because I'll be driving around in a yellow Lamborghini and have diamond encrusted teeth. So I'd pick a lens that is super expensive, the Leica 1600mm, because only one of those exists owned by somebody who doesn't need to worry about money because it cost them a cool $2 million. And then I'll adapt that to an M10 body and then use live view and then pay for Lenny Kravitz to come around to my mansion and then brass the body with his bare hands. Yeah. Either that or I'll go for something sensible and get a Leica Series Zero, which costs millions of dollars and then secretly sell that off and then buy a house with a pool. All right, Jordan, so we're back together here and it's time for a big reveal on the kit that we've decided, you know, money is no object. What would we choose for ourselves personally? Okay, you go first, you're the host. Now there's only one problem with this whole scenario, Jordan. Normally we show the gear that we've chosen, but because it's a dream kit, we just, we can't get the gear, right? I mean, it's too much stuff. So, ah, uh, my dream kit is actually gonna go full frame. I'm not going medium format. I want the full frame cameras. I like the versatility. I like the more compact nature. And I decided to go with the Canon EOS R5 because every time I use that camera, I love using it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it handles. I like the weight. 45 megapixels is plenty for me. It's not too much, it's not too little. The camera's autofocusing is on par and there's excellent lenses like I've talked about. So that's my whole kit. And because money is no object, Jordan, I'm just going to use CF Express A cards. I'm gonna get one terabyte cards. I'm sure they're ridiculously priced and uh, I'm not gonna throw them in the garbage or anything. That would be ridiculous, but I'm just gonna, I don't know, throw them in a jar in the pantry and forget about them. Every time I fill them up, just chuck it in there, get another one. Filters, I never want to clean them again. I'm just gonna buy 100 filters and I'm just gonna throw them in the garbage anytime time done, I This guess. sounds like an ecological nightmare. Oh, okay, well, I mean, I'll use them as drink coasters. Drink coasters, this is a good idea, drink coasters. So, you know, I mean, the Canon EOS R5, make no mistake, this is still a very expensive piece of kit, especially when you start throwing in a lot of nice primes and, and high-end zooms. But at least it's a dream that I think is somewhat attainable with hard work, so. I'm happy with my choice. I think it's gonna work great for my photography. Okay, Chris, so my dream setup is actually quite similar. Now, I, I would love for my ego to have an Alexa and just run around making beautiful films, but then I realize that's not really how I spend my life or make my money. Uh, I think full frame mirrorless makes a lot of sense for me, but then I round up with a really difficult choice I love the Panasonic S1H that we're using that's filming me right now, but there's some areas where it's pretty deficient, where a Sony A1 with that ability to record 8K without too many compromises, have really wonderful autofocus, would actually be really useful a lot of the time, but then whenever I'm using that, I'd be like, oh, but I like the assist tools from the Panasonic better, and where's my full V-log? It's all compromises, so my dream setup is I want one in each hand, A1 here, S1H here, with a full complement of zooms and primes. Look at all these beautiful lenses I could put on there. I don't need big bulky cinema lenses because the truth is I don't have an assistant and that's when you really need, no actually scratch all that. What I want instead of two high-end cameras is I would just like an assistant. Why didn't we get to pick two cameras, Jordan? Well, that's not within, fair. within like the same format. Well, the right? same format, we didn't talk about that. Okay, well I'm, if we're staying in the same format, I'll pick another full frame camera. I want a like a Q2 monochrome at my side but That's like a time. totally different type. Of, I mean, you're just making up rules now. You might as well just make up your own camera. Oh fine, I will then. I'm gonna talk to my contacts at Leica because money's no object and Mr. I'm gonna Get a Leica, I'm gonna get a Leica Q2 monochrome with a fixed 70 mil f2, and it's gonna be black. And the Q2 monochrome with the 28 mil is gonna be silver, and it's gonna be amazing. This Why don't is I just do that? Completely useless. It's just a wish list at this point. You're gonna get your ZFC full frame at the same time. Why not? That's a great idea, damn right. And it's gonna it's gonna automatically index with my AI glass. It's gonna be amazing. This great. has been a fun thought experiment. What a nice dream. Okay, well, despite all that bickering, uh, this was actually a lot of fun. And I do want to say a big special thanks to our guests for telling us their dream kits. But we also want to know what your dream kits are. Let us know in the comments below what you guys would like to have if money were no object. And explain a little bit about your photography and why that would be such a good fit for you. I'd love to read that stuff. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, go to deepreview.com. There's always fantastic articles there as well. And otherwise, we hope to see you all very soon.